hey everybody, notice how I'm actually addressing my camera this time and I'm not giving cross-eyed teas. Anyways, welcome to me, myself, and I am Joey G, Bad Bussy on IG, whatever you want to call me, as long as you follow, stream, support, all of it. And another person who we should be following, streaming, and supporting while I put down my Aquaphor that I'm aggressively throwing around <laughs> is our guest, DJ, artist, fashion icon, Tamaguchi. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you for coming. Of course. I was, I'm so glad to be here. I'm very happy you're here. You are actually in my like dream guest list of people. Oh, I'm honored. That I want. <laughs> yeah, for real. When I was like, I don't want to say manically putting together my guest list, but I was putting it together in a very vulnerable emotional moment yeah. going through with life and whatnot. Yeah. It's just like, who's going to be on this show? And I was like, Brie Runway is going to be on this show. Rina Sawayama is going to be on the show. Charlie XCX is going to be on the show. And I was like, and Tamaguchi is going to be on this yeah. fucking show <laughs> as well. So we have one out of four, the rest to go. But for now, it'll happen. We're it, manifesting it. It'll definitely like, happen. Yeah. It's, it's it, already out there. It's out there. It's out there. It's literally in our script. The director just hasn't given us Give the page it. yet. Right. You know, it's probably going through <laughs> editing. Right. It's fine. Fine. We got time. Yeah, I'm not good at <laughs> editing to begin with, despite the communications major. So, fierce. We'll just be the performers. Right. Which is what you are. And you're promoting your album, Almost Blue. Yes. Specifically, the After Hours Deluxe. Yes. Version. Can you tell us about that? So, um, Almost Blue After Hours was something that i kind of didn't have the idea to do mm -hmm. when we made almost blue it was like right before the pandemic um so i finished all the music and then everything shut down so i'm like okay i don't know if i want to put it out yet yeah and then it came out and then after it came out um i feel like it just needed just like so much time has passed since when i made it i was like where am i right now emotionally yeah. and like the clubs are back open so it's like i want to put a spin on it that's like specifically for the club right now exactly yeah because it's quite a heavy project even though you listen to it and it's airy it's blissful yeah sonically to begin with it's beautiful Thanks. your vocals are great on it and despite like the lyrical content I feel very at peace when I'm listening to it. Like when I'm doing my dishes, I'm either listening to, like we were talking about earlier, Azalea's C-SPAN Instagram yeah. stories <laughs> or your album, honestly, because it just yeah. it has a very consistent flow to it. Each song segues into the other peacefully. But like I was saying, the content, though, it's kind of heavy because it's giving like it's very much about a breakup. Yeah. Which it seems so. Did you feel like that as well when it came to releasing the After Hours Deluxe version? You're just like... I'm way past that. I need something that I feel recently connected to. Yeah, I feel like, well, at the time when I made it, um, I was inspired by a lot of reality TV. Mm -hmm. like, I was in a relationship and it was fine. Like it wasn't bad. I was at peace. I wasn't working because everything was shut down too. So right. it was like a chill time. Um, but then when I redid it, I was like, out of that relationship and then as the remixes were coming along i was in another relationship um and it just like i was in different spirits if mm -hmm. that makes sense yeah yeah completely. um so also i wanted to collaborate with people more there's like a couple of people that i worked with on the ep that i would say are like pioneers yeah. in their own way even if it's like the numbers aren't matching up they will eventually absolutely like, with how iconic these people are um and they're like heavy like their styles are heavy so i really just sent them the vocals and i was like you do with it as you please yeah i completely trust you and there we have it yeah i like it because it's like a reimagining of the album similar to like you know dawn of chromatica and all yeah. that stuff yeah. it's pretty much like here's me as one creative giving you my piece of work that i put all this time in for you to essentially do the same thing but right. In your own yeah in your vision. world like each i feel like each remix has their own world you know? mm -hmm. so i love that are there days where you prefer listening to the standard or not even the standard but the original cut versus the after hours cuts of the songs honestly 
I don't really listen to my own music that mm-hmm. much. But what I do is like in the morning or I listen to music when I'm working regardless. Right. Um, so I just like put my computer on shuffle and then if it comes on, it comes on. <laughs> yeah. And it's to be honest, it's a lot of the demos is not even like the official first version that was out or the remix. It's just like the takes that I did at home. Yeah. Because this EP was the first EP that I recorded my vocals in the studio. Like really? normally I record everything at home. Mm-hmm. So especially, I mean, you said you made the first copy of the album during. Yeah, exactly. The pandemic and everything. So, it's like those versions are what comes on because it'll be like one version that has no drums, mm-hmm. another version that has drums and like a hi hat. You know, like it's yeah, it's so many steps, and I just export it so I can listen to it on the train. So I have yep. like twenty versions of one song, and that's why I don't have any space in my computer because I have so much shit in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, having to listen to the MP3 files on like the files app. Right. On the phone and then your screen locks and then the song stops and you're just like, like, ugh. <laughs> right. That's the worst. I used to do drag and I would make my own mixes and that would happen all the mm-hmm. time when I'd be listening back. So I'm like, I really have to put this shit up through Apple Music. But regardless of the fact, right. you said you were watching a lot of reality TV. Yes. At that time too. What reality TV were you watching? Well, I love 90 Day Fiance. I love work. Um, the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love Divorce Court. I love Family Feud, even though I don't really sing about that. But it's technically reality TV. Yeah. Um, what else? Like anything on TLC. Um, Do you watch Dance Moms? Or did you I used to watch Dance Moms? Dance Moms. <laughs> Dance Moms is <laughs> so sickening. Nobody watches Dance Moms. Like, well, I feel like people do, but they're like shy to say that they love it. But me, I, Abby. It's so good. Icon. Icon. Are you <laughs> kidding? Especially now there's been like a resurgence of like Abby Lee Miller memes and yes. stuff like that. That's all I'm using on Twitter. That's all I'm I quoting would. Have in you my seen real life. The one when the lady walks up to her while she's like in her chair and she's like, you preach theater etiquette to my kid, put your phone away. And she backs up. <laughs> Reverses. Reverses. And she actually goes to Arby's. Yes. She's flooring it down whatever Pennsylvania I free love state. That. I was like, I can't believe this is real. Like, I can't believe Abby is a real person. I can't. I agree. You agree. I agree. (laughs) Because, like, it's such a sick and twisted concept for a show. And she's such a sick and twisted lady, honestly. But she's also such a sickening and twisted lady. And same goes for the show. She really did. She made stars. And the... the, um, the choreography was like beautiful. Mm-hmm. Like there's been times where I've been so obsessed that I'll go on YouTube and I'll be like looking up the actual not like T V edited. Right. The with the fucking like uncopyrighted yeah, music. Yeah, the uncopyrighted music and all of that. And I'm just like she really did her job. Dance legend. Dance legend. Dance <laughs> legend. Honestly, I know a lot of my friends here that like grew up in like the tri-state area, even in like Pennsylvania, that used to do dance, and they're like, "Yeah, we would see Abby Lee, Abby Lee's, Abby Lee Miller's company, all the time yeah. in the flesh." And I'm like, "That's a little historic, if you ask yeah. me." I would kind of gag. <laughs> they they were all gagging, Kathy specifically, or what was her name, Candy, the like, um, whole Candy Apples yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah, that's so genius. Yeah, like you're pitting children and their mothers against each other, and then you're gonna start rivalries and beefs between dance companies and they kind of do it naturally so it's like why not make it a show there was a dance so moms genius. miami was there really yeah i, I had no idea about this a girl from my school went to it and no i remember way. when it happened everybody was like oh my god jessica is like on dance moms miami that's why she doesn't go here anymore and i was like good for you absolutely <laughs> the, the school isn't necessary right Go go do that. That's go that. gonna make you a star. It I was mean, one season, but yeah, I had no idea that they had that because Dance Moms, like the Abby Lee Miller one, was it called like Dance Moms, like Pennsylvania or something, or it was just Dance Moms? Just Dance Moms. I had no idea they had it by state. Yeah, now it's Dance Moms Miami and Abby wasn't on it. They had like different coaches. Got you. I yeah, think they like competed against them at one point. Yeah, it's only right, but. Still iconic. That's really historic. You gotta watch it. 
I'm going to. This house is fucking all. I, literally, like when I tell you, all I've been doing is just like using those fucking Abby Lee Miller. It's so good. Memes and shit. There's the one where she's like, that's sickening. Sick yes. oh, it's <laughs> so funny. Anything I do, I'm like, that's sickening. It's sickening. And it cuts off like right after. So it's like two seconds long. Right there. Then there's Sorry. the one where she's like, I, I can't. And there's like the dramatic yeah. TLC music <laughs> and everything. She's a fucking icon. Icon. And speaking of icons too, when I was like doing my research before our interview, I was looking at your other past interviews. And I know you talked about your favorite artists, yeah. which are icons, honestly. Icons. Which you mentioned, at least in this specific interview, you mentioned Nikki's one of them, Bjork is one of them, yes. Imogen Heap. Yes. And then you also mentioned somebody else. Let's be professional here, look at my notes. And Brandy. Oh, yeah. How can I forget Brandy? Icon. What were your favorite songs by those four legends? So, by Nikki, it definitely was Save Me. Um, that was the first song that I ever brought on um, iTunes. Mm -hmm. I remember I just got my iPod Touch, and I, like, begged my dad. I was like, yep. can we go to Walmart so I could get a gift card? <laughs> and I went on iTunes, and I bought it because I just, like, discovered her. Mm -hmm. And I was so obsessed with it. Um, Save Me is my favorite um, Nikki song. And it's also like drum and bass in it too. It's so good. And it's like just very me. Um, and what else is my favorite? My favorite Bjork song is, I think it's called Violently Happy. Mm -hmm. I just be name it. They'll have a title, but. It'll be something completely it'll different. Be, for me, it's like my favorite part of the song, but I'm pretty sure it's called Violently Happy. But I love her. Um, discography is just amazing. Top tier. Brandy, Full Moon. Yep. The Aphrodisiac album. It's so underrated. Uh, it's so underrated. Underrated. Aphrodisiac is like my favorite. My brother growing up, he like loved Brandy. Like, you know the game Mancala? Yes. He like created like a Mancala like thing and he put like he decked it out with her pictures all over it. Wait. And I remember being like, this is amazing. Brandy's amazing. Just not from That's that, but is. that was like how much she was like played in my household. <sighs> so, yeah, that was like the first voice that I felt like I like really listened to mm -hmm. growing up. Um, Emotion Heap. Um, I love Emotion Heap. Same. The way that she like layers her voice and uses it as an instrument is insane yeah um and she has like an earlier project called fro fro or fru fru yes you know, how do you pronounce it do you know i think it's fru fru i think i've been saying it's almost like a band kind yeah. of concept in a yeah. way yeah and i love that album it's like wow i've never heard anybody else mention that wow that makes me really happy perfect and like i love that album so much i listen to it so, i listen to it pretty often mm -hmm. um and it's just like no skips for me, so none. The yeah. first like, the first like studio album too from Imogen, like obviously with like, um, fucking like the walk and everything oh, on yeah. it. Like that yeah. whole project is excellent. Excellent. So much to the point where Ariana used "Good Night and Go" as a yeah. sample. Yeah. And everything. People don't give Imogen enough credit. They don't. I love that Ariana did. You know, Ariana like um. She's like fro fro or emotion <laughs> is so amazing that she created these like gloves where you can make music. The Mimu gloves. Hands, the Mimu gloves. Um, I'm obsessed with that. I need a pair, but I love that Ariana like used it mm -hmm. on her performances. And I was like, yep. this is how you like pay tribute mm -hmm. to like somebody that inspired you. Like, I love that. Cause it was Imogen that invented those, I think Yeah. as well. Like Ariana went over to Imogen's fucking random cottage yeah. and shit. And she sat there in front of the mic just like this and it would, yeah, that's insane. I love that. And I love that she made it like the gloves, like open software mm -hmm. so that if you were to get the glove and you were into coding, you can like make them do something else as well. Exactly. So that like, the artistry or like the practice of it keeps moving forward, which I love. I love that it's not just like one set stock yeah. setting. Yeah, she lets you do it. I'm like, if you're gonna buy it, you might as well be able to do more things with it. Exactly. Cause like, I think it was the honeymoon tour where she was using those gloves too and she would perform Why Try 
yeah. with it. And each night she would do something completely different yeah. with the gloves. So that means she probably had like an engineer in the back, like doing whatever, something different every night. I think that's so fucking it's so cool. Sickening. I can see like Imogen and Kanye doing something because Kanye is very innovative when it comes to sound and technology yeah. too, like with the STEM player and everything. Yeah. I'm like, how have they Collab. not? <laughs> Collab. That would be Honestly, fierce. I wouldn't be surprised if they like did something mm -hmm. under the low, you know, like production goes like yeah. through so many hands, which I realized, mm -hmm. um, who knows? Maybe it has happened. A lot of people also have aliases, like, different names very like write on tracks or collab on tracks and they use a completely different name mm -hmm. so maybe where did speaking of aliases too where did tamaguchi come from i mean like you could put the two together yeah obviously but like what was the moment where you're just like that's fierce i'm so that. like every thursday was when my dad got paid so we would go like he would drive me to school in the morning mm-hmm and we would pass in Florida and Miami specifically, like South Florida, there's so many Walgreens. Like <laughs> every- Every corner. Every like six blocks, there's a Walgreens or a CVS. And I f remembered like I would stop there in the morning just because. Mm -hmm. um, and on Thursdays he would give me an allowance. So we would go and I would stop to Walgreens and I would go in and buy like a Tamagotchi. Love. They sold them there and it was $15. That's how like obsessed I was with it. I was like, it's the cheapest here too. Like I did my research. <laughs> Had a sales pitch and everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. It was the cheapest there. So I was like, hmm. So I would go there every Thursday and then buy a Tamagotchi. Then I started collecting them. And like in school, I was so obsessed that like during recess while people would play, um, I would like, do this thing called like matchmaking services and they would pay me like five dollars and i'll be like you just leave your tamagotchi with me for the day oh Don't you worry. business woman yeah that's was, genius was, <laughs> i was running it up on the low and i was like i will match your tamagotchi with like another one so your tamagotchi can have like a little baby or like level up or whatever yeah and they would do it so that was like that world and then um like while I was in Miami also like I wanted to do modeling mm -hmm. and I was like I'm gonna book something for Gucci like that's like my dream 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 job yeah also like not knowing much about fashion but you knew the brand yeah exactly so I was like okay and then I was on Twitter and I needed an at name and my first like at name was like Bay Wi-Fi or something like that and then I was like it's also really cute too. It's cute. That's right? a really <laughs> cute name. It's cute. I wish I had my old laptop because that had like that era in it. Uh huh. But, um, I was like, what can I do? And then Tamaguchi, like a spam account, had it. Yeah. So I was like, okay, somebody like may have thought of that before, or I don't know, like, because also Tama means egg, I believe. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. But then I was like, okay, then I put Tamaguchi, and then I also just morphed Tamagotchi and Tamaguchi together. And I was like, this is going to be my artist name because nobody has it. So, And it ooh. stuck. And That's it a stuck. really cute story. Yeah. <laughs> Does it, like, when people hear it, they probably think, you know, Tamagotchis and Gucci's. But to you, do you have that personal recollection every time you sit and think about your name or every time you see it on Spotify or Instagram? Like, do you think of your dad those trips to walgreens yeah stuff actually, like that because my dad spoiled me so much <laughs> like he yep. he was the parent that like anything you want like he would be like give you a hard time about it and be like oh you don't need it but he will give it to you yeah mm -hmm. so i think about that a lot especially like when it comes to me like spoiling myself i'm like oh, why not you know exactly yeah, and it comes back to me when i do see my name because Honestly, a lot of people don't put those two together until like a little bit after or yeah. some people, they recognize it immediately. Also, like when I was search for things, like sometimes I'll be looking for like interviews that I've done. Mm -hmm. um, or if I want to see if somebody talking shit on Twitter, right. and like search up my name. Keywords with it too. Yep. Like once a week, somebody's like, I got a million dollar idea. Tamagotchi. No, a Gucci collab with Tamagotchi. And I'm like, oh, you're Babes. so late. <laughs> the copyright has the already copyright been has already like filed. been filed. So yeah, I think about that a lot. I see. 
That's a really cute story. Yeah. I really, really do love that. I'm not over the whole business venture I'm that you had. No. That's genius. You said, bitch, I'm a mother. Right. Of many. Of many. And I would make like $60. That's genius. At the end of the week. Not a day, but like the end of the week, I would have like 60 I mean, like for elementary school, right. cell phone business, self-starter, self-made billionaire. Right. $60 a week is a fierce start. Right. And like I was on a step team. So after school, like they had vending machines would tear the vending machines up. Like, Absolutely. I would spend like $20 on the vending machines and everything in there was a dollar at most. So I would have like 20 different snacks. About to go off on these combos right. in this vending machine. Right. The Sour Patch Kids and like all of that. Obsessed. Stop. See, this is so random, but like as an adult, I find myself obsessed with the lifesavers. Like I'm obsessed yeah. with lifesavers yeah. gummies. Like that's me with Starburst. Really? I love a Starburst. What's your favorite? Honestly, I like the orange one. The orange one is really good. They're all really good, mm -hmm. but the orange one for me just like. It has a cute little tang. Yeah, it just like, it does something. It does a little, like the yellow one is like nice. We like her, but the orange. The orange one is, is superior. like, I don't know. Whenever I eat it, I'm like, it's unexpected. Like, you know, the flavor, the flavor. It's just it's just so, so real. It's real. The other ones, I feel like I like them because people tell me like the pink and red one. They're always like the pink and red one is the best. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's the best. But in my head, I'm like, nobody's seeing the orange that the pink isn't even that great. Like, didn't Kim Kardashian have like her whole like obsession with the pink one or something? And then they had yeah. they now sell like bags of just the pink yeah. Starburst. Now there's like you can go to the store and they it's. I don't know the exact name, but they have some that is just like red and pink only. That's in the crazy. Packing. I don't get that one, obviously. See, <laughs> yeah, right? Like, where's the orange one, first where's of all? Where's the variety? Where is it? Like, right. the red one is cute, too. I'm a big, like, red and cherry flavor for a lot of things. Like, yeah. cherry Jolly Ranchers? Oh. The cherry um, Airheads. <sighs> Those are good. Those are good. The green apple airheads too the are good because those have a <laughs> nasty tank to you it. Know which one I don't like? Um, the white ones, like the mystery flavor. Yeah, never cared about those. For what? For what? It's like <laughs> the like the mystery flavor dum dums too. Yeah. It's like this better be blue raspberry. Yeah. Or else I'm gonna be so bad. Right. And then it's like the cotton candy one. You're just like. <laughs> That shit is such a letdown. I'm like, now I have to deal with this soft ass flavor. We don't want that. We it's hard cotton candy. I love cotton candy, but not on anything other than the actual cotton candy. Like I want it in the cotton candy form. Yeah, it's a sensory experience. Yeah, that's what it is. I'm a huge like sensory person. Really? Yeah. Well, that makes sense because you're like an artist and you're also a DJ yeah. too. So you play with sounds, you're very in tune no, with that. No, it's like really bad. Like sometimes I could spend like, an hour on Instagram, like watching those like sensory videos of them. Playing really? <laughs> and like slicing the soap and slicing shit like that. Soap. I love the soap slicing. Videos. Really? Yeah. You know what I love for like sensory things? I love, this sounds so random, but there's a story behind it. I love brushing like a brush against my skin. Mm. It feels so good. And it's like yeah. very therapeutic apparently. Yeah. Like I used to do that when I was little cause I had like these sensory issues when I was a kid. And that just stuck with me. And I have this little plastic brush that whenever I get like stress, I just, and it's it so is. relieving. It is. It's so fucking relieving. The one sensory thing that I hate, like if somebody like pulls on out now and like plays with it, I will lose my mind and jump out the window. It's like those little like hologram things. The It'll be like a piece of paper or like a, the um, you know what I'm saying? Are and you like, talking about the like not the fortune tellers? No, they're like they used to be on like the cover of like the agenda books in school. Whoa, this is taking me back. <laughs> but like you know those like things you'd write like your homework in like those notebooks or whatever. They would always have them as the cover of ours. And like if you scratch your hands like this against it, it would make that really uncomfortable I know what you're talking about. screechy sound. And it's like the point is like if you move it back and forth, it like moves whatever yeah, the image I know what is you're talking about yeah <laughs> i cannot stand those and i will never ever get over those like i need to do a full ayahuasca retreat and we'll see if i'll even get over my fear of those honestly i hate those i feel like there's nothing wrong with that yeah do you need to do a retreat no <laughs> i'll go on one right regardless right. but like Get out of New York for a little bit. Literally for that <laughs> point, exactly. And it won't even be anywhere fancy. I'll literally just take my ass back home to Maryland. Right. 
and be like, yes, I'm on my folklore evermore Trying era. To get rid of this sensory issue. But in reality, it's like a mini vacation. Exactly. Do you have like a sensory thing that like that drives you crazy? You know what? Um, for me, it's like I have like a weird sensory thing like with like pool floors. Oh, like I cannot. But even like getting out the shower, like I, it needs to be something on the floor. A rubber mat, like a rubber mat yeah. or like a cotton, not cotton, but like a mat, like something like soft. I cannot step on a tile like with like a wet tile. I with like wet feet. That's worse than stepping on like a puddle <laughs> with socks on. I'll no. say it. Yeah, like it's, I could do the sock. At least it's like a barrier in between mentally, at least for me. But me stepping out like the shower on a wet, like bare floor, no. Or the pool, no. Yeah, the wet tile thing, it just takes me to another place that I don't want to be at. I can't. It feels like I just step off foot off a helicopter, landed bare butt ass naked in the middle of Antarctica yeah. on a fucking glacier. Right. And it's so <laughs> uncomfortable. And I'm like, what am I doing here? I'm like... I like I, my mind starts doing spins. Like I also have like okay. trypophobia to a certain extent. What's that again? Exactly. I know it's the name like, of it. Like holes, holes, like little holes, but it's not that crazy. But there's a specific type of like little like holes, like uh -huh. a wasp nest. I can't do it. Yeah, I can't. Like the wasp is not freaking me out, but it's like the holes in the wasp nest. No. Yeah. So imagine that. Like one time I, one time I belly like flop into the pool oh and you know that hurts yes and it can make you itch and then after i did it like i look at the bottom of the pool and it's a wasp nest oh my then i get wow. off the pool and i step on the floor like towel i like lost my mind it just went from worse to <laughs> worse sensory overload like i was like i can't handle this yeah pool floors are disgusting the only ones that i prefer are like the smooth ones. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. I think like my dad back home, like he has a pool in his backyard or whatever. And the ground of it is like this weird gravel yeah. thing, which from an aesthetic point is really pretty. But then when you're walking on it, it's like, this feels like I'm walking on a gravel road yeah. of some type. Like this yeah. isn't the fantasy. <laughs> this isn't the fantasy I'm trying to live. I'm. Bad. This isn't giving mermaid. I don't want to sit on one of these fucking right. rocks. I want to go back and, and shit. Like, I don't want two legs. <laughs> Literally, it's like those places like, or like those beaches where it's like you walk in and it's all fucking like rocks and it's like, okay, already getting in the fucking beach water to begin with is the most unsexy thing to yeah. begin with. Cause I'm yeah. fucking stumbling, tripping, whatever Fergie said. And now, there's these fucking rocks. I don't like the beach floor either. Like it's weird. I don't like it. Like the little fishes, like and stuff like that, and like the seashells with the little holes in it. Yeah. I can't. And I'm and I love the water. Like I love going yeah. in the water Same. at the beach. But it's like even when the water's clear, my ass is always just like, like what <laughs> i leave the beach with the nastiest tech neck ever because i'm just like yeah i'm like and i need to shower immediately that immediately that the beach is fun but it's a really gross and humbling experience yeah i'm from miami so i get it oh yeah, yeah. i went I'm to like, school in miami did you wear mm -hmm. i went to fiu oh okay cute yeah yeah i went there Which i transferred campus? there first i was at the bbc campus that's the that's not the one on Biscayne. North Campus. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, the one on Biscayne. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then halfway through my time there, then I started going to MMC because my advisor thought it was a genius idea for me to take all my like core classes at the end of my time there. You know, Wasn't a smart like, idea. Sometimes a little backwards. So. <laughs> Definitely, but me too. And you know, I found my ways to get those credits cleared without exactly. actually having to take them. She sees me now. Hi, Juliet. <laughs> She's proud of everything that I'm yeah. doing. Just a little, I don't want to say bribing, but charming. Charming. Just a little charming. That's what it takes. Charm. Yeah. Trust me. I I took these classes. I'm, I'm a communications major, babes. Exactly. I don't need college algebra for the fifth time after I failed it in high school 12 yeah. times. Right. It's disgusting. See, that's why you were a mother and businesswoman in elementary school. Right. You had your mind on the money. Mind on the money and like, a calculator always does the trick. That my I'm sorry, but like <laughs> I'm sorry, but the calculator provides everything that I need. I have not used any formulas ever since I learned them. Me either. Not like a I tried. Yeah. And I'm like, this is too much. Like 
nothing. Nothing. Even, and like, this sounds so bad, but my friends will even be savvy enough to, like when we're out at dinner, they'll do the math when it comes to like the tip and everything. And I'm like, nah, babes, I'm waiting for a recommendation at the bottom of the right. receipt. Like, I love when they have that I 18, 20, that. Da, da, da. I'm like that. If not, I'll just overestimate and overspend, yeah. even if the service yeah. was shit. I'm just like, here's a 20 for yeah. my $5 can exactly. of Red Bull. Yeah. Same. Like, I'd rather just be stupid, hot, and mysterious than overcomplicated and stressed yeah. with algebra. I hate algebra. In the world of really geometry, bad. too. Oof. Geometry is a rough time. Oof. Once I got to algebra and they started introducing, like, letters into it, I was like, this is too much for me. Downhill. I'm also dyslexic, too, so mm. that on, on a whole other thing was, like, throwing me off. So I was like, I can't with this. That's a really good point. That's very fucking insensitive. Yeah. Of whoever his last name is Math or whoever invented Math. I don't fucking know the doctor. But like whoever that was is very insensitive. Right. Now that you think about it. I feel like when they made it, they didn't intend for like everybody to be forced to learn it. (laughs) That's a very good point. They're like, this is an acquired study. If somebody wants out there to read this fucking combination of sentences of letters and numbers. If you want to do something with it, go for it. But if you want to just learn simple math, do simple math. Yeah, they really said this 1x plus 2x shit is for the girls that get it. And if you get it, you don't, you don't. You don't. But now we all had to just not get it. We had to take it. We had to take it. And we had to struggle. In my school, you couldn't, like nothing, like when I first got to algebra, nothing. They tried something new and they were like, nothing's going to go in the grade book if it's a C or below. So anything below a C, like you can't. It doesn't go in the grade book. So you can't go on to the next thing that you're supposed to learn unless you get a C or higher on that test. And that was like no. a nightmare because like I wasn't it wasn't clicking. No, that's the thing. Like that's where you need to ask for a D at least. Yeah. Like D's get degrees, yeah. darling. In those classes that you can't fucking understand, and there's not enough people that will help you, how do I say it? Cheat? Like right. <laughs> right. then you're fucked. Then right. I'm gonna need this D and be able to pass. With I this did shit. my last two years in homeschool. Really? And I cheated. <laughs> I mean, I think Honestly, that's just being resourceful. You can Google like the exact question and it'll pop right up. Like before I even finish typing mm-hmm. the question, it will pop up. And I was like, oh, amazing. I don't even consider that cheating. I find that, I think, if anything, you're being an overachiever. Right. You're taking computer class and right. information science studies at the same time right. as math. That's quite innovative. Right. Your other peers in geometry can't, can't relate. relate. <laughs> you guys had to sit there and subtract on both sides of the equation. Work smarter, not harder. That's genuinely. It is true. It, geometry, I'll never forget now they're on this topic for some reason. The most, one of the most horrifying moments in my life was in geometry. It was already terrible. The teacher fucking hated me, Miss Hankins. <laughs> she hated me. And it was one of the only times I tried participating because she knew I was a flop. I knew I was a flop. This just wasn't going to end well. And I think I ended that class with a 69, which isn't a C, which is what we had to get to. Yeah. But she was like, I don't want to see you ever again. Go. Take it. Go on to Algebra 2 and fail even more. And we were talking about circumscribed. Ugh. Yeah, uh-huh. We're, I don't know. Why the fuck do I remember all this shit? But anyways, we were talking about, like, circumscribed angles, and my stupid ass said circumcised in front of the whole fucking class. Oh my God. And she even was like, she was like, this flop. <laughs> it, was, right. it was so bad, and I didn't even realize it. I was like, no, my I just ate that. hated me. His name was Mr. Torres, and he was, like, the meanest person ever, ever, Not ever. Mr. Torres. And he was gay. So oh, like, that's oh he that could have been a friend. That was he could have been a friend, but he chose to be a foe. So absolutely, and no. I would purposefully show up. I had it first period, and I would purposely show up like late, mm-hmm. and I would have like a McDonald's um, orange juice. Absolutely, and, and I will always get kicked out, and I will save my hash brown for when I get kicked out, so I can eat it in the hallway. Genius. Yeah, I don't miss those times. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> I don't reflect on them a lot, but then moments like this so randomly just like come back at me and I'm like, 
I remember everything. Right. Maybe I do need to take this fucking <laughs> ayahuasca trip where I forget about this and the fucking. Scratch yeah, I brought up two things of school. What am I going through? <laughs> this is fucking gross. This is weird. <laughs> but yeah, don't miss those times at all. What made you want to move from Miami to New York? Well, I feel like I did everything that I could possibly do in Miami. Because mm, you started out there yeah. when it came to DJing and music. Well, I started like making music first and mm -hmm. then like I did my first performances then I started performing a lot and then um I like kind of performed everywhere that I possibly could mm -hmm. and then like also doing more things and like having more things under my belt obviously you can raise your rate and the rates yep. went up and they was like refusing to like kind of pay it so mm -hmm. I was like okay you know what let me just go somewhere and um I moved to New York, like, with my ex, actually. And then, yeah, it was no regrets. Um, I see. So, yeah. And then I started DJing during the pandemic. Like, mm -hmm. I used to live, like, in the same building that I was that I used to live in. There was, like, two amazing artists that live above me. At work. Um, Susia, and, like, her name is, like, Susia with, like, an exclamation point. Mm-hmm. And then there's um, another artist named Manny, DJ Manny, and he's like a part of Tech Life from Chicago. Yeah. And um, we would just like smoke all the time. And then like I would go upstairs and they would like let me use their DJ equipment. So I kind of like Fierce. learned from them in a way. Um, and that's how I picked it up. Like my first DJ gig was for Club Quarantine. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. for Caroline Pulitzer. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It was, it was for that. So, and then wow. ever since then, it's just been like, which is cute. Because yeah. a lot of people want to book me for things. And like, obviously I sing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, I can sing at a rave because I have like certain tracks that I could do. For sure. But sometimes like the way it's set up is not like suitable for a singer. Yeah. But they'll book me to DJ. So it's still like I get to s have my point of view. With yeah, music, completely. But not singing, which I like. I like that. It's kind of in a way like, you know, how Sophie would, you know, yeah. do sets of their own yeah. and like, yeah, they could sing them or they could just interpolate them differently yeah. into their set. Yeah. That's how, you know what I mean? I really like that. Yeah. I, I'm so glad that I picked that up, to mm -hmm. be honest, because it, it really, it also makes me think of music in a different way. Like Completely. How music, which like was a part of the EP, like mm -hmm. the remix EP. I was like, what would I want to DJ? You know, like, or yeah. how would I, like, mix this track? Or, like, is it possible for other DJs to hear it and want to play it at the club, you know? Right. So, yeah. Which I think, if anything, it's, like, a good thing to think about when you hear music, yeah. you know? Like, there's some songs where you listen to it, and it's, like, no notes, I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah. But it's, like, if you could, yeah, what would it be that you would change? Right. And that's a fun thing, because that means the song is making you think, it's make you think how you could change it and what kind of other life it could live. Yeah. Which essentially is what, like you said, what you did with the remix, your two projects yeah. and the remix. Yeah. EP and everything. I really like that. Do you prefer performing your music versus DJing? Do you prefer one specifically? Honestly, I love performing when I have like the option to perform like exactly what I want to perform. Yeah. Because there's some times where like, I will perform in environments that are more like dancier. Mm -hmm. Also, like club environments where like I'm not able to sound check and like I just kind of have to get up there and wing it. Yeah. And honestly, not to toot my own horn, but I kind of be like winging it and like Eating. killing it every time. Regardless, exactly. <laughs> because in Miami, like I had to do that. Like I was only performing like at the clubs or yeah, like at bars when i say bars it's more so like a club night at a bar yeah yeah at a bar but yeah i would just like get there and just like sometimes like i performed before where like the mic cable was like had a shortage and they told me as i got the mic so like i had to like hold the cord like around oh the mic. not the broken iphone charger method no literally that and i was like i cannot but i got it done and so I would prefer to perform when I can like act like when it's like the perfect setup mm -hmm. where I can like do something slower if I wanted to or yeah. like yeah. 
and not have to worry about like shortages in the mic or and i'm able to have a sound check before because mm -hmm. then i feel like even more confident in like my performance right do you think comparing djing and performing do you think one is more vulnerable than the other because like I feel like as a person, as an entity, like you could kind of get yourself across more when you know you're on the mic, you're singing, you're performing, you're singing anecdotal stories from your life, da da da. Whereas like when you're DJing, do you feel like you're kind of taking on a different character in your your own kind of like enigma? Yeah. In a way, do you think one is more personal than the other, or like how do you bring your own personality when it comes to DJing? Because you know sometimes you'll see this is such a long question, ill, but like you'll see some DJs and it's like they're just on their own. Yeah. Like, they're just, like, aloof, and I'm like, I don't know who they are. I know yeah. their name and their Instagram. Yeah. I don't know anything about them. I yeah. just know what they're playing. You know? I feel like, for me, like, it's definitely the same. Like, I... I bring, like, the same entity to both. Yeah. But there's different things that I, like, want to portray. Like, when I'm performing, it's very, like... <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, it's very, like... You're the spectacle. Yeah, it's like kind of just fab and glam and Completely. Like beautiful. And I use a lot of strings in my music. So like Which sparkly and just like all of that. Even if it's like at a rave where everybody's like nitty gritty, sweaty. On drugs, on each yeah. other and on drugs. Like it's still like that is what I always bring. But when I'm, when I'm DJing, um, I feel like it's very like bad bitch energy. Like, yes. I play like a lot of like rap music, but if it's like rap music that I play is typically like um, women rappers, mm -hmm. like um, because I'm not interested in hearing men rap. To be honest, <laughs> there's some that go off. There's some but... that go off that I could throw in there. That's the, and they and I feel like I throw it in there because they have that bad bitch like energy about them too. Yes. So yes. but when I'm DJing, it's very like the that. girls. It's very like it's the girls and it's like techno and it's like mm -hmm. all of that like morphed and like drum and bass all morphed into one. And it's very like bad bitch energy. But yeah. when I'm performing it's more like fab and glam, but still kind of has elements of that as yeah. well. Yeah. I remember I saw you at more 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 the last oh, yeah. one during yeah. pride weekend yeah i think it was yeah amazing oh my god amazing i love that party it's so fucking fun i love that party and the lineups are always like top notch top notch and like uh, it's just like amazing they're like, so that fun party. in that venue too for that night yeah. specifically it was in bushwick i can't remember what venue I remember, exactly it's it like was. no one's ever done anything there i don't think anybody will do anything there else again after that one because it was like the person who owns the venue is kind of like a mess oh no really it was like their first time ever doing it and i think they were overwhelmed because oh, wow. the line was like around the block like, that's how i was walking into your set like yeah. i was supposed to be there earlier but like the block like the line was literally it wasn't moving the and then um they didn't have like i guess the wi-fi went out so and then it was no signal because it was so many people. You know, yep. sometimes that happened when it's so many people concentrated in one area. Mm -hmm. And it was like no Ubers available that night too. But like Venmo wasn't working because nobody had signal. There oh, was also shit. no cash. That's right. Like, so they was running out of like change for people. So that was like a part of the delay with the line. And then like it was just a mess. But the venue itself but was, was such a serve. Yeah. Like, it was cute. Like, the top floor was, like, the warehouse thing. And then in the basement, I was like, this definitely was somebody's quince, like, at some point. Yeah. Like, it was, like, this little, like, basement dance yeah. fucking gallery had, like, room. Mirrors, like, That were all sweaty that and was everything. All sweaty. Yeah. <sighs> it was cute. That was, like, one of my favorite sets. That was so fun. We went, my friends and I specifically went for you and Mazerbate because, like... Oh, my God. That's we, my boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we, like, love... <laughs> You guys' sets, and every time we go see them, we're like, yep, high later. We're doing night. a back to back on the 20th, if you want. To really? Yeah. Where at? At nowadays. Work. Yeah. How have I not known about this? The 20th. Okay, I think it's I'm going to be in town. Club carry. Oh, that's right. I saw yeah. it. That's on a Thursday? Thursday, Friday? I think it might be. I don't know. To work. I'm it's there the regardless. <laughs> no, yeah, because even when we were leaving, like, end of the night, we were just like, highlight to the night. What well, were they? We were just like, Obviously, Tama and Masbury. Everyone else there is excellent. Like, the lineup is great. Yeah. But, like, we, I remember we were just like, oh, this is going on Pride Weekend. 
have to go. Yeah. Have to go. And I think we saw you first and then we went downstairs. Yeah. Because I play on the earlier side. I think mm. I went on like, I think I went on at 1130, mm -hmm. 12 latest that I went on. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It was so good. Thank you. How did you guys meet? Oh my God. We met in Miami. <laughs> really? Oh. It was so random, but it was like. That's and really cute. during like Art Basel. Yep. And like, no, actually he bought something from me from Thomas Corner first. And he'd be trolling okay. me because I charged him for something. Like <laughs> he thought he was going to get it for free. And I was like, you're cute, but 40 dollars You've been a businesswoman <laughs> since Tamagotchi daycare. Right, literally. Please. So it's like, it's just business. But um, we met in December mm -hmm. um, during Art Basel. And then like. It's just been like that ever since. I love that. Did y'all bond over music, essentially, or like, you know, the creative arts, DJing, I think et cetera? One of the things that we bonded over the most was that we're both kind of like in the same world yeah. of things. Like we both kind of work in the same world. Mm -hmm. Also, like me being a performer as well, and then him outside of him being a DJ, being a stylist as well. Yeah. Like I can appreciate the idea of, a stylist creating eras for other artists mm -hmm. and like how they talk about clothes and like I think I admired that so like yeah and then he admires from the aspect of being somebody who create eras for artists but hearing like what artists go through and how they talk about music yeah so it just kind of like yeah it's like that way two different sides of like the same coin That's yeah the first time no. i've ever used that <laughs> saying <laughs> but like it works it works yeah you know yeah that's really that's really lovely and it's like you're still learning about somebody yeah because like for me personally if i'm dating somebody i don't want you to do the same like carbon copy i don't want you to do the same shit yeah. that i'm doing if you're doing something let it be a little different so i could still learn something right new right you know and i feel like we also kind of i've learned so much like from him and mm -hmm. I feel like he can say the same about me yeah so it's like it's really cute like it's really sweet I think that's why we've been so like obsessed with each other since yeah we met. yeah that's really good and I love like just like within like our little queer bubble especially yeah. in nightlife like I love seeing like couples like yeah real cute because couples like is we talk about that like, kind of often like we're like it's so kind of random that we are together because mm -hmm. like a lot of people in our world like they probably have hooked up yeah but like they're yeah. not together mm -hmm. um and like no shade to that i love we everything. love a hookup we, we love a hookup. trust we love a hookup but it just didn't happen that way with us mm -hmm. yeah i love that because yeah and like everyone's in like we love an open relationship. Oh, that's yes. for people. But that's like too. people are in very loose relationships. Yeah. Like there's open relationships and then there's loose relationships. Yeah. So I'm like, is this? I'm too much of a Leo for that. I'm like, what's a sign? Virgo. Oh, yeah. It's not happening. It's not happening. Between both of those two it's signs? Like, no, absolutely not. not. not See, happening. yeah, I'm a Taurus, so I'm stubborn. Yeah. And that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Like if I want to go get dick dick else elsewhere no oh, dill ew <laughs> if i want to go get dick elsewhere i'm gonna right. put the stop sign on and pause then go this. get it elsewhere right exactly whereas right. like me once i start hooking up with somebody and getting also like emotionally invested in them i'm completely binded into yes because then you that. also realize like being intimate with this person it gets better simply because like it you does. you're more comfortable you know like and as it happens, yeah. as you learn more about these persons and like you just, it just works even more because you know more about the person. Completely. And that's the thing. Like I used to be like Miss Hookup Girl, like trust, like I encourage all my friends, like have your hoe era, right? download the apps, go right. on them, get all that you need to because it's so formative and you learn a lot yeah. about yourself physically you and mentally. You like and what you don't like. Yeah, exactly. But I, I think it was around like 23 is when I was like, enough, enough. Yeah. Enough. And now I find myself like catching not feelings, but like catching soft little feelings for people that like I've had maybe a night with, you know, maybe I'll go on a date da, 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 and then we hook up. So it's like, I'm yeah. getting the full package in one night and yeah. I'm like, I prefer this Yeah, much more than the transactional hookup, hook fucking up. leave. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, just feel, I don't know. It's like, 
nobody does does dates anymore. Like I feel like that's like a thing. Like no, nope. people are just so used because that's like a curse with the apps. They're so used to being like, let me go on the app, find somebody, ha- meet them immediately, and be done with them immediately. Grubhub delivery to the right. door. No, it's exactly. very that. Yeah, and they don't really like realize that a big part of like being in a relationship with somebody is going on dates and like experiencing things Mm -hmm. and that's like gets taken away because of the apps and a lot of people don't know how to do it because they only have done it on the apps that that's why i had to delete it because my relationship experience comes more within hookup culture i guess like I started hooking up and shit before I like started like talking and talking to guys and going on dates and stuff like that. Like my first date, if anything, was like getting railed, like you know, which is like like a fucking grinder hookup in yeah. Miami. Sheesh. Yeah. But it will happen in Miami. <sighs> Girl, it was in the building that I lived in. It was so convenient, but the convenience was not worth it. Yeah. It was so bad. Yeah. That was the first time oh god I'm like, my dad watches this shit anyways sorry dad time stamps but i don't right. give a fuck but yeah never ever again but still even after that occurrence i still stayed on grinder and you know yeah i found good dick here and there and it got yeah. better and better and better yeah. but then at some point i was just over it and i remember the last hookup i had was here in new york the guy like it's funny because now like we don't really like float within the same circles, but we have a bunch of mutual friends. Okay. And it'll be like once or twice every year where we'll be in the same room. I'm there with my friends. He's there with his boyfriend. I'm just like, yes, <laughs> love it. Here I am. There you are. And I remember after he left, after the hookup, it was a great hookup and everything. It was amazing. I just like closed the door and I was like, well, so what now? What now? Like, it was so boring. I was just like, yeah. okay, like the hookup itself is great, but I was just like, what the fuck do I do now? Yeah. Like, do you get back on the app? <laughs> exactly. Do I leave a review? Like, right. does the notification come up for me to leave a tip or an review? Right. Like, great service above and beyond. Right. Head was great. Like, what the fuck do I say do you here? Do? You know? And ever since then, I've just been like over. And if anything, I feel like those kind of stop the blessing in a way from you actually, you know, similar with you and Masturbate. Like, meeting somebody in person and curating a yeah. relationship with them. Yeah. You know, cause these apps and stuff like that, they're great. Like shout out, like if that's your thing, that's your thing. Yeah. But like, yeah, really. Yeah. I mean, if you guys want to provide a sponsorship, it would right. be shout absolutely lovely. I right. will happily be one of the fucking ads that pop up on grinder. Like right. all the fucking weirdos apps that are, what is it? The advertising save now. Um, Oh yeah. On like Instagram stories, like when it pops. Yeah. Up. Yeah. I'm like, what is this? But, Anyways, yeah, they just, like, put weird expectations on relationships, and that's what I'm realizing now. Like, I know a lot of good friends that are in really good relationships, and it's because they started out as friendships. And I'm like, yeah, oh, you actually have to know the person yeah, before you commit to a relationship with them. Yeah. Who would have thought? And I love that because I feel like that's why I'm, me and um, Matthew, we, like, mm-hmm. kind of – it was, like, another thing because I had no idea who – he was like, I didn't know he was a DJ in the style. Right. Like, I had no idea. And he didn't know anything about me as well. See. So we like actually had to get to know each other before anything. Yeah, because it's hard, like, especially with people here in nightlife and our scene and stuff like that who have their own curated images and like personas already via social platform or via whatever their art is, to kind of build an idea of who they are, which like they could be somewhat accurate, but it's not like when you actually get to know the person. Right. Right. You know? It makes a difference. Yeah, like, it never is, like, my fucking Instagram name, I guess, or whatever, is Bad Bussy. Like, (laughs) that's a very different image. I think people have a very different image in their head when they're thinking of me versus when they meet me. I mean, like, granted, like, if you talk to me right, like, you could get that preferred image, but, like... Same. You know? Yeah. I feel like when I meet a lot of people in person, like, from my Instagram Mm -hmm. handle, they think I'm, like... Yeah, like I'm easy to talk to, but like I think they expect me to be a little bit more like it's Tamahuchi, you know? Like I think they expect oh my, me to be uh, a little bit. They're more. like, where's da 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 da? Yeah, and I'm just like, this is me. Like, I'm the same fucking way. I hate that. Like, I'll be happy to put like videos of me on my stories or like on my fucking feed of me like twirling and like throwing ass at fucking yeah more more more. Like I fully have a video of me like 
chaps, sweaty as fuck, like lace and chaps, like ass, like literally bouncing and you see the sweat flying off. <laughs> it's a gorgeous video. Watch it all the time. But like, I'll go in other places that aren't that and people will be like, oh my God, bad bussy. Like, yeah. it's like, am I about to like bust down in the middle of Walgreens right now? Right. No, like, right. unless you give me a discount, sure. But like, right. for the most part, no. It's no. just like a fun little like curated image. It's just not that deep. It's not that deep. People make it, you know? And it shouldn't be. And then they think they have to live up to their thing. Yeah, like their whatever they're image. Whatever they on Instagram. That's um, why I'm like, I am try to make sure like whatever I'm posting on Instagram is like very specific. Not very specific, but like it's very true to me. Yeah, like it's I try authentic. not to take it too serious. Even if I need to post something serious, like if it's something that's like a paid sponsorship, Completely. I'm like, I still need to make this like how I would do it, you know? Yeah, you still have to keep you in it because then if not, then it just feels like very sellout. Right. Like this is a robot. Like this is like not this literally. Is not this is like a corporate, you know? Literally, it's giving hashtag ad. Right. At the top and bottom. Right, exactly. Of the caption, which like, it's just so inauthentic and whack to me because like, once again, if like that's people's things, like go for it. Go for that's it. That's great, but like, that's not me. Because at the end of the day, I'm just gonna be like, okay, now I feel corny. Right. And that's my <laughs> biggest pet peeve ever. Right. I can't describe what that feels like, but I know I don't like it. Yeah, same, same. You know? Like, it's just same. not. It's not me. It is not a good feeling. You know? But another thing, back to music, I wanted to ask you about too, is you have a cover of Britney's Toxic. Oh, yeah. What made you want to pick Toxic out of all songs? I mean, like, granted, legendary single, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's fucking iconic. But, like, what's your personal story behind that song and why? Honestly, the music video for that song, like, yeah speechless you know like it's re like she really left no crumbs like it's just perfect 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 and then um i do this a lot where i will make a beat and then i'll be like writing my own lyrics to it and then as i'm like writing to it i like start singing another song and then it just kind of formulated mm -hmm. that way i knew i wanted to cover a Britney song and then Toxic is my favorite one of hers mm -hmm. so it just like came out and yeah. then I recorded it and I was like this is nice and it's an <laughs> excellent cover too because it's not like copy and paste it's yeah. your own reimagining it's different and that's what I love about it like if I'm gonna do a cover like it has to be like my interpretation of it yeah which a lot of people I feel like don't get like they'll do a cover and they'll try to like emulate it exactly how it is Blah, it's like if I so want to hear it exactly how it is I would hear the original I just go to in the zone right back to right toxic exactly if it wasn't if you weren't gonna cover toxic what were your other choices um I like if you seek Amy that's a serve when I heard that song I was gagged I was like I heard on the radio and I was a kid. <laughs> it was like, I was like, am I hearing F U C K me? Yeah, she did. And then I like listening harder and she's saying, if you seek Amy, I was like, genius. doesn't make any sense, does it? I was uh. like, genius, 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 genius. I wish I thought of that. She's a genius. That's like, I have mothers, but that's my mama like yeah. that's my mother yes. like you could say you ever saw that video of candy that's exactly what i was referencing right here that's my mama you could you say could talk you could tweet you but, could that's, tweet, my but mama. that's my mama i don't <laughs> care what y'all have to say that's my mama that's me with brandy to be honest <sighs> brandy's excellent i met her actually <gasps> where at work <sighs> yeah was she sweet <sighs> she anointed me the anointed I one did. anointed me on that day i met her literally i think Today could be the anniversary of it, possibly. It was literally like second week of October. It was last year. I just got my second concussion. Oh my God. Random fucking story. And I'm at work, cause you know I was working through a concussion. And work. yeah, right? <laughs> and so I'm there looking crazy as fuck, bug eyed as hell. My eyes are fucking bloodshot and shit. I'm just like there, but I knew Brandy was gonna be at the office that day. So I was like, I'm not staying home for this. Yeah. Like, fuck paid sick leave. I'm going to be here for this right. moment. Right. Because, like, you know, there, everyone is a fan of Brandy, but, like, you and I were... We know Brandy. Like, Brandy we, fans, yeah. you know? And 
I think she was also like within that same few weeks, she was also celebrating like the anniversary of uh, two eleven too. So like I even mentioned that when I met her, and so like that, she's like, you know, and I was like, yeah, the girls are gonna I get love it. That. And when I was like going up to meet her because like I'm a producer for a morning radio show over here, and she came up and she grabs this necklace that I used to have. I think I have it at home, and she's like, this is beautiful. You're beautiful, and I was like. Oh my god. Just like almost wanted died. to faint right there. And I was like, I would have died. And like, I don't fan out over celebrities, but I was just like, Miss Thing, you're beautiful. Yeah. She's like, You're so beautiful. What's your name? And we talked and everything. And I was like, No, like, you have no idea how many times I've listened to Almost Is Never Enough, like, uh, getting over guys and stuff yeah. like that. And I was like, I watch your fucking, like, random, like, 2020 census set all the time because it's yeah. fucking excellent. No, she's, she's like, That's so random, but I really appreciate that. And I was like, You're an icon. I love that. It was the greatest day of my life. I'm going to show you the picture of it after this. I look bewildered in it, but like, (laughs) regardless, I don't care. It's fucking brilliant. But what Brandy song would you cover? Um, If you had to pick one. If I had to pick one, honestly, I would probably cover... Hmm. Almost doesn't count. Oh, I said almost is never enough. That's an Ariana Grande song. Almost doesn't count. Yeah, I was like, wait, is it almost never enough? No. Almost, almost doesn't, doesn't count, count yeah. mm-hmm. with the video where she's in the bed of the yeah. truck and everything yeah. yeah either that one or um aphrodisiac when she's like ha ha ha, ha. yes <laughs> i love that song there was a moment where i was obsessed with that like um i remember because i have a ton of nieces and nephews mm-hmm. and like i will like go over to my brother's house all of my nieces and nephews are from one sibling so they will all Work. be at the same place whenever i go mm-hmm. and sometimes i would babysit them and there was a moment where I was obsessed with that song and I was like, ha 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 like all day and like imagine like eight little kids like all day like I love ha, it. Ha, ha. Like I made a little choir. Brainwash them. <laughs> it was cute. It was Raise cute. them as Brandy's children. Right. Exactly. The agenda is working. Right. The agenda the agenda's working. is working. I could also see like knowing your voice and everything and your sound. I could see you doing like a really sick When You Touch Me cover. Oh my God, I love that song. Uh, Matthew the, loves that song. Too. Really? Oh, I love that song. Gorgeous and I song. also love, um, um, like when I auditioned for um, like art school, cause mm-hmm. I wanted to go, you know, New World, the School yeah. of Arts. I went to Miami Arts Charter in Miami, but mm-hmm. I wanted to go to New World. And when I auditioned, I used um, Brandy's version from the Cinderella in my own little corner. Stop. That's Killed it. So Killed absolutely. It. But I didn't get into the school because they go by points. And like, I didn't, I was like missing. I didn't have any music. I didn't have any background music. And it was like, I remember they was like, this is like, you did such a beautiful job. Um, we want you to come back next year and audition. But mm-hmm. I couldn't because I was in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. But I love her so much. So you did it just acapella? I did acapella. I should give you more points if anything. Right. Because like acapella covers can kind of be cringy sometimes in person, but like right. for you to do it and do it well, I'd be like, okay, yeah. give her a 20. I did it good that they asked me to come back and audition again next year. And I would have, but mm-hmm. I was just out of town. Everything well, happens for a reason. <laughs> it does. It, if I was there, I probably wouldn't have been able to um, look up the math answers online. <laughs> exactly as you were raising 12 different tamagotchis exactly. that are all hanging on one keychain exactly i know you're that girl that had them all just like on one fucking i had i had like five max on one but what i would do is i would have like a little lunch box and i would have them all in there that was probably loud as hell wasn't it walking down so the hallway loud. so loud already them like sitting on a keychain together like the dangling i was like it's so loud such a menace like now that i think about it i even had like during that era you know the five star like um, yes. Uh-huh. I don't know if you remember they had one that had speakers in it. That's right. It was in like the little folder pockets. It was in the it. folder yep. pockets. And I had one Whoa. that had speakers in it. And I was obsessed. Like the teacher would be like, if anybody talks, write their name on the board. And then she would get up and go to the bathroom. And we would have somebody by the door on the uh-huh. out. And like I would play music from my speaker. I guess I always kind of been a DJ too. Always. Like, <laughs> That's really sweet though. It's always yeah. fucking been there. Now here you are. Yeah. Doing the thing. Now it's like my job, which is cute. You made it happen. I made it happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. And since we're like closing up our time here, where can everyone find you like within 
this month, like events live for you to, for people to see you perform, DJ, everything, because you're excellent. Well, I think I'm doing Club Carry on the 20th. I'm going to be at Three Points in Miami on the oh, 22nd. That's so fierce, yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited for that. And I'm then on Halloween on the 31st, I'm DJing, but I'm opening for Miramasa at Elsewhere. As if, like, that's a small thing. We love Miramasa. I love Miramasa. We love, especially we love. their recent shit. Ugh. Per the perfect album. It's... Ugh. Perfect. Okay, well, I'm going to try my best to be at every single one of those I mean, functions. I, <laughs> I got you. Much appreciated. Yes. And much appreciated for you coming. Of course. For real, like, besides your music and everything, I'm just like, oh, you're such a fun <laughs> person. That means a lot. It might be the Leo. Like, I love Leo's personality. Yeah. Maybe that's it, or just... Also, the taste you're bringing, Stan, and we just have similar taste. We, see, like each we see each other. We're very like the seating right now is very <laughs> right, reunion. Right. Very, we see each other. We see I each other. I love that scene where she's like, "Well, what you said was some bullshit." <laughs> well, what you said. Oh. Well, hang soon. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Oh, of course, of course, for coming, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Y'all can tune in next week. See Tamaguchi live. Please stream all their work stream their set, stream their album. And thank you for joining. We'll see y'all next week.